the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia. Hello and welcome back to the Low G U channel. Today's session is all about how to play the classic 1937 hit The Trail of the Lonesome Pine and make it sound as if it belongs in the original soundtrack for Laurel and Hardy's movie Way Out West. Now over the next two and a half minutes or so I'm going to travel back to 1937 and play along with Stan, Ollie and Walter on guitar. Now if you're listening in stereo, my uke playing will be in your right ear and the original soundtrack will be in your left. And if I make it back, I'll review some of the techniques I use. Give the gentleman the best in the house. Yes, sir. I'll be back in a minute. Just below is the cabin home of a little girl of mine. My name is June, and very, very soon she'll belong to me. For I know she's waiting there for me neath that lone pine tree. In the blue beach mountains of Virginia. She carved the name, and I carved mine, or two, or June, just like, like the, the mountain, mountain blue, like the pine. I am lonesome for you. In the blue mountains of the ginger, on the trail of the lonesome. She carved her name and I carved mine, oh June. Like the mountains, I'm blue, like the pine. I am lonesome for you. In the blue ridge mountains of Virginia, on the trail of the lonesome pine. Okay, so I made it back and I'm back to my full colour self. Now this song is actually quite tricky to play. Despite everybody in the movie clip looking so laid back and relaxed and spontaneous. Now you know the way you normally have a lyric sheet and you write the chord names above the words where you want the chord changes to take place. Now this song isn't like that. The chords change here in time with the beat and the words happen to fit in in time with that beat also. Now if you get your head around that, you're well on your way to being able to play the song. Let's have a quick listen. My name is June and very, very soon she'll belong to me. So it's all about timing and intonation. Intonation, hard and soft strokes, long and short strokes. Now, there's nothing better than a good old robotic strumming pattern to kill any song. So we need to avoid that. So how do I actually communicate the strumming technique for Lonesome Pine? Well, I'm going to have to resort to the ancient strumming language that I invented a couple of years ago. There's only a couple of words you need to know. Da is a downstroke. Cha is a downstroke where you choke or dampen the strings. Kl, which is like the second syllable of the word kettle, is an upstroke. So if I'm to say to you, here's the strumming technique for Lonesome Pine, it'll go like this. Da chattle da chattle da chattle da chattle da chattle da chattle da da da. Get it? 
All right, let's listen back on the song for a few seconds. On a mountain in Virginia stands a lonesome pine. Now that pattern applies virtually throughout the entire song. And it's up to you to maintain that discipline to keep that feel going, no matter what you think is happening to the words that you're following. Now there is one exception, that line with the B flat and the A seventh. Like the pine, I am lonesome for you, ooh, ooh, ooh. There's nothing you can do there other than ad lib that in time with the way the singer delivers the line. Like the pine, I am lonesome for you. So a couple of other things. Firstly, you've probably noticed that I use the pad of my thumb for all strumming strokes, down strokes, up strokes, the lot. And that's to keep the sound nice and mellow in keeping with the mood of the song. Secondly, you'll notice that I have my uh, forearm anchored against the sound box on the ukulele. My fingers are actually underneath the sound box, underneath the sound hole, so that all movement either comes from my wrist or from my thumb. So that means I can keep control because if you're like that, you're all over the place and you won't be able to develop the touch and the consistency that's needed. Finally, most of the chord changes take place on the da downstroke. And also, most of the upstrokes, there are no fingers at all on the strings because I use that as a gap in the middle of the chord changes. So that only leaves me to say, if you already have a ukulele with a low G string, or you're thinking of converting, why not like, subscribe, and click the bell notification icon, and stay in tune with new releases here on the Low GU channel. Thanks for watching. See you again.